Hi, I'm Rachel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to uh, pour and load an agarose gel, which is a staple for any DNA work you'll be doing in molecular biology. So I start off by measuring a gram of agarose and um, 100 milliliters of 1x TAE buffer to make a 1% gel. As you can see, it's kind of clumpy and white but it will become very clear after boiling in the microwave. If you don't have a lid to your beaker, you can always wad up a paper towel. And you don't want it to be tight because it will boil and blow up potentially. So I set it to one minute increments and check on it often. Keep an eye on it, don't walk away and go do other things because then it can boil over and make a huge mess. So our gel is boiling. You can see the little pieces of agarose, not dissolved yet, so we're gonna throw it back in for another minute. As you can see, it's completely clear. Before we pour it though, we wanna cool it down. Number one, that allows the gel to solidify a lot faster, but also because we're adding aphidium bromide, which is a carcinogen, we don't want it to um, evaporate and then we'd inhale the toxic goodies. So if we cool it down, the aphidium bromide goes in, stays liquid, and we all stay safe. So the way I like to do it is I like to cool it at the sink. And I turn on cool water, and I give it a spin underneath. So I swirl it for maybe 20, 30 seconds. Feel it, still pretty warm. Still feels warm, but I can kind of comfortably leave my hand there. So it's good to go. If you wait longer to the point where it doesn't really feel warm at all, um, it'll start to solidify. And in that case, you want to throw it back in the microwave. We don't want it to be too cool because it'll start to solidify in your beaker and you won't get an evenly poured gel. You'll get kind of patches and your DNA won't um, resolve into nice discrete bands. So I'm adding, for, for 100 milliliter gel, I add 10 microliters of ethidium bromide. Give it a little swirl, distribute the ethidium bromide, now we're ready to pour. So here uh, we have two different kinds of gel boxes and I'll show you how to pour both. In this type you line the gel up with these sides on the outside and then you use these weights to go on either side and the pressure will hold them in to create a seal inside the gel so that it doesn't leak out. In this kind of gel box the hard plastic sides will be on the outside but in order to pour the gel they go like that so it creates a seal inside with these rubber gaskets so that your gel doesn't leak out. Then I take my combs, put that there. Now I'm ready to pour my gel. These small gel containers only hold 50, so I'm gonna pour two gels. And if you wanna see that you have enough, if you get down on the level, you can see how far your comb is in your liquid. So you can see that that's a good well. So that gel is good to go. Same thing on this one, we pour. You can also see how far up the well it goes. So our gels are solidified. So we're gonna start by removing the gel, rotate it 90 degrees, and then take the comb out. And for this one, take the weights out from the side, and then rock the comb out gently. DNA is negatively charged because the phosphate's in the backbone, so it'll run towards a positive charge. The red unit is the positive charge, and the black unit is the negative charge. So in this case, our gel is upside down. And for this case, check the lid for which lead is which charge. Positive, negative, the DNA will run from the wells to the positive end, so it's exactly right. Now we're ready to pour our buffer. And since we made the gels with TAE, we're gonna use TAE as our buffer. And the important thing to keep in mind is that you just want to make sure that the gel's covered and that there's liquid in all the wells. So now we're ready to load our gels. For me, though, you may have your own way. The easiest way to do it is I put both my elbows on the bench and then I use my left hand to steady it. And then I slowly depress the pipette and the sample will sink. And I'm very careful not to disturb the well so that the sample doesn't slosh around. I wouldn't put a piece of paper or anything underneath because you can use the contrast, the black on the bench, to really see the well. And if you have um, a light surface underneath, you won't be able to see it. So a lot of times people will have bench coat down or a paper towel or something and you can't see the contrast. So the darker the surface, the better. So now that our sample or your samples are loaded, we can attach um, the leads and then plug this end into the conveniently color-coded 
power box and we're good to go. In this case with a 1% gel, we're gonna run it at 150 volts, but that varies based on the percentage of your gel because the gel can melt if it's up too high. So you want it to be a high voltage so it goes fast, but not too high that it melts your gel. A good check to make sure that everything's working is you should see bubbles on both ends of your gel box. Okay, so our gel's been running for about 45 minutes now. A half hour probably suffice. Um, just wanna make sure that you give it enough time to really resolve any of your bands. And you can see condensation and that's because heat's generated as the current goes through and some of your buffer evaporates. So if we take the lid off, you can see our loading die has migrated down the gel. Take this gel, uh, stick it under a UV source to image it and you should be able to make out uh, your well-separated DNA bands.